takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the knee, intercepted! it! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! I know you're going to dig this. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. I'm about to go down! You're listening to the For the Culture Podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. Dan Dockage interviewed Chris Ballard yesterday on 1070 The Fan in Indianapolis, and I had a couple problems with this. Problem number one, Chris Ballard was answering questions that should have been targeted at Jim Irsay, Chuck Pagano, and Ryan Grigson. Problem number two, I like the hard-hitting questions. I've been begging for the hard-hitting questions, but Dockage is a guy who is going to his grave defending Ryan Grigson. He called Grigson terrific last year. He was complimenting Grigson so much on last year's Colts team that Ryan Grigson actually took a step back and said, well, I'm not perfect. I have made some mistakes. Like, he played the humble card. Ryan Grigg, the worst general manager of all time, was actually playing the humble card last year because Dockett was praising the living hell out of him on the radio. Now, Chris Ballard, who has done a phenomenal job, he inherited Andrew Luck's shoulder injury because Ryan Grigson couldn't protect him. He inherited Chuck Pagano as a head coach because Grigson and Ursay hired him and Ursay kept him for a sixth season. Chris Ballard doesn't want Chuck Pagano to be his head coach right now, but his back's against the wall. He's answering questions for Jim Ursay. What is he supposed to say? Uh, yeah, we didn't give Andrew Luck a timetable, but our owner's a crackhead. No, he's not going to say that. What is he supposed to say? Just come out and say, I don't want Pagano here. I'm going to fire him after the year. There's certain things that you can't say. And I like that there's a hard-hitting guy now in Indianapolis that wants to come out and ask the hard questions. But Dockage was here last year praising a general manager who destroyed this franchise for five years. So it doesn't add up to me. How could you love what Ryan Grigson did. How could you compliment Ryan Grigson, call him terrific, then come out the next year and rip Chris Ballard to shreds? This is not Ballard's fault. Ballard's cleaning up Grigson's mess. Ballard inherited Chuck Pagano as a coach. Ballard has now gone nine games and will go 16 games this season without Andrew Luck because Ryan Grigson couldn't protect him over five years. Chris Ballard's answering questions about Jim Irsay not making sense to the press. That's not Ballard's fault. Like, Ballard's answering questions that Pagano's never seen in six years, that Jim Irsay doesn't see, that Ryan Grigson never saw in five years. It doesn't add up. None of it adds up. And I don't understand why Ballard, it's like everything is so backwards. We want Pagano to get grilled. We wanted Grigson to get grilled. And then Ballard comes in, does a tremendous job through his first year. He was handcuffed like crazy. He had so many limitations with the quarterback, with the coach, with the offensive coordinator, with the defensive coordinator. And he's the one getting grilled nine games in when Grigson went 70 games and didn't get one question nearly as hard as Ballard got yesterday on Dan Dockage's show on 1070. Yeah, I've got a couple problems with this situation, this interview. It starts with one. He didn't go after Ryan Grigson with any type of vigor like he did with Ballard. He went after Ballard with the guns blazing. He did not do that with Ryan Grigson. In fact, one would say, if you listen to that interview he did with Ryan Grigson, that he lobbed him softballs for 20 minutes and kissed his ass for 20 minutes. And then when he got off the phone, talked about how terrific he was. And I'm sorry, your credibility takes a hit with me. When you've kissed a guy's ass to literally burnt down our franchise, like if our franchise was a house, Ryan Grigson burnt that shit to the ground. You didn't grill him. The guy that's trying to rebuild the house and though he'd been here less than a year gets grilled and all this, and Doc is just patting himself on the back saying how it's, it's a, he's a great interview. and all. JMB did the same interview two days ago. Same interview. Did it professional, didn't yell at him, didn't, oh, you cut him off, didn't do any of that stuff basically asked the same questions and actually got better answers. So for Doc is just thinking he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, listen, he is what he is, but I listened to two interviews. I listened to the JMB interview with Ballard, and I listened to the one with Dockage. And I prefer the one with JMB. I got more information out of it, and it was even-keeled, and it wasn't like he had 
a grudge. It's like he has a grudge against Ballard because he took his buddy's job. But his buddy didn't deserve that job because he sucked at it. It's like he's the only one in Indianapolis that doesn't realize Ryan Grigson was a complete failure as a GM and is a terrible person, and nobody likes him. The only person that seems to like him now is Dan Dockage. As far as the questions themselves go, most of those questions, they're great questions. They're after the wrong guy. Exactly. Like the whole four inches between the ears, that's Ursay. The He's going to be ready by the beginning of the year, that's Ursay. And again, I personally don't think Ursay was trying to do anything with the fan base. I don't think he was trying to lead them astray or whatever the rumor is. If you know Ursay and you've been around, you know he's a super optimistic guy. So I think it was his optimism that got the best of him, and he said that stuff. Should he have said it? No. But Chris Bauer doesn't have anything to do with that. He can't control what the owner says. No one can. He's the owner. So I had an issue with that. Some of these other questions about Quincy Wilson and all that, that's Pagano. That's not Chris Ballard. So, I mean, you put our GM in a situation, and basically it's a no-win situation because he's answering questions about things he didn't say or do or even have any control over. He wasn't here when Ryan Grigson was bombing draft after draft. He's trying to, as I stated, if our, if our organization was a house, Ryan Grigson burnt that shit to the ground. And Dockish, I guess, doesn't want to admit that. But Chris Ballard is trying to slowly rebuild. That doesn't happen in six months. And he's not the reason Andrew Luck is injured. Ryan Grigson, Dan Dockage's boyfriend, is. So I didn't get the interview. Yeah, I'll give him credit for asking the questions. But again, JMB on the same station did it two days earlier and did it better. I mean, I know there's a lot of Dockage fans. I know there's a lot of people that don't like Dockage. I'm not a fan of the way he's one way with one person that's only been on the job for 10 months or whatever it's been, nine months. But then the guy that was here five years and ran us into the ground, he just kissed his ass like it was his job. Like that to me is very hypocritical and unfair. If you want to listen to a good interview, listen to the way JMB interviewed Ballard. He asked him the same questions, but he prefaced the questions by saying exactly what Luke and I have just said. I know you didn't say this. Your owner did. Or I know this is Chuck Pagano's area but I'm going to ask you this anyway. So he prefaced it with facts and knowledge and then asked the question instead of just going off, basically yelling these questions at a guy in an unprofessional way, not prefacing it with anything. And that's what Dan Dockage did. All this said, though, Chris Ballard is a boss. He handled that stuff with ease, poise, didn't get rattled. If that was Grixon, Grixon would have been on the phone 15 seconds. Ballard stayed on the phone, answered every question, didn't get rattled, didn't get angry. There was no real change in his voice. And that's because, to me, when you're an honest person and you're not lying, there's no reason to get rattled. You know what you're saying is the truth. You're just calm. And that's exactly how he was. And look, Chris Ballard, as far as I know, has not lied to us about anything. You can say what you want about Ursi misleading or whatever you want to say it was. I think he was just being overly optimistic. And Chuck Pagano being full of shit, he would be right, okay? But Chris Ballard has been nothing but candid from the draft to up to this point with Andrew Luck. And I have no reason, I don't think you do either, Luke, to not believe what he's saying. Let me say this first about Chris Ballard, and then I want to get back into the interview. Chris Ballard could turn out to be a horrible general manager four or five years down the road from right now. But right now, all we have to go on is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. We don't have a lot to go off of. He's only been here a short period of time. It's not a big sample size. So to grill him in any way, even like take this out of it, because a lot of these questions weren't for him. They were for three other guys not named Chris Ballard. Only about two or three questions actually should have been targeted at Ballard. But in general, our view of Ballard in general could very well change over the next couple of years. We might hate Absolutely. this guy in three years from now. Yeah. But as far as November 10th, 2017, what we're going based off of is one draft, one free agency cycle, three or four press conferences. There's not a lot to go off of. We don't know that much about this guy yet. And we haven't even seen him really get a chance to go into a season with the quarterback, with his head coach, with his scouting department going into a draft. So it's really hard to build concrete opinions based on this man because we're in the beginning stages. In 2012, I don't remember grilling 
Ryan Grigson the way I grilled him in 2015 and 2016. Things change over time. Guys get worse over time. The Giant fans ran Tom Coughlin out of town. He won two Super Bowls as the head coach of the New York Giants. So people's voices burn out over time. So my point is it's a little early to have anything concrete on Ballard because I see people already wanting to get rid of him. I'm not saying he's the greatest general manager of all time. I'm not saying he's going to be even a great GM in Indianapolis. But so far, so good in my opinion. The question about the offensive line really, really irritated me because last year was Grigson's fifth year in Indianapolis. Dan Dockage was complimenting him on the offensive line and complimenting him on what a great job he's done over five years. This offensive line that Ballard has right now, first of all, Andrew Luck has never been hit and never been sacked under Chris Ballard. It's never happened because he hasn't played it down yet because he got hurt due to the carelessness of Ryan Grigson and Chuck Pagano from 2012 to 2016. Second of all, there were three draft picks last year made by Ryan Grigson on this current Colts offensive line. This offensive line that we're watching right now is a five-year product of Ryan Grigson. It has nothing to do with Chris Ballard as far as Chris Ballard building this offensive line. It was developed by Pagano and Pagano's staff, who was brought to Indianapolis by Ryan Grigson. So if you're getting on Ballard for not changing the offensive line when he had one offseason to change the offensive line, and that offensive line had three rookies on it from the year before when the previous GM drafted three guys for that offensive line, how in the world are you going to attack Chris Ballard for that offensive line. That was your buddy Grinchin's offensive line, and it took him five years to build that offensive line, and this is how bad the product is. And lucky for us, Andrew Luck is never going to have to be behind this offensive line this year. He's never going to have to be behind the line that gave up 10 sacks a couple weeks ago to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That question should have been directed at Ryan Grigson. It's not fair to ask Ballard, that question. It's not fair to ask Ballard questions about Jim Mersey coming out and saying things in August. Why should Ballard have to answer those questions? That's not his job. He shouldn't answer those questions. And what's the real answer? The true answer is Jim Mersey doesn't know what he's talking about. He's out of his mind. Now, let me ask all the people out there, if your boss says something stupid, are you going to go on the radio and say, my boss is an idiot. My boss is an alcoholic. My boss is on drugs. My boss doesn't know what he's talking about. You're not going to say that. You're going to cover it up with white lies. You're going to say he's an optimist. So is Ballard telling 100% of the truth there? I don't think so. He's probably covering up the truth a little bit. But that's only because you can't throw your boss, the owner of the franchise, under the bus on 1070 The Fan. You can't do that. It's just the way things go. You're not going to throw your owner under the bus on the radio. So there was a lot of that. There's a lot of questions that should be targeted to other people, and Ballard's the one that had to answer these questions. Yeah, I, I agree. Luke, you hit all that on the head, man. For me, the biggest issue is strip away everything else. The biggest issue, I wouldn't have any problem with him going at Ballard the way he did if he went at Grigson that way. With Dockage, you get a completely different guy with Grigson because it's his buddy. Then you get when he talks to Ballard, which is not professional in my opinion. Nope. You got to do your job. Your job is to ask tough questions, not be someone's friend. And, and I, because this is what all the journalism people online always tell me, you have to be professional, 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 professional. Well, I don't think necessarily that Dockage was professional yesterday. And, and he certainly wasn't consistent with the way he was with Ryan Grigson. Yeah, to me, it's more the lack of consistency because had he have been this way for five years, with Grigson, I'd be fine with him coming out and flaming Chris Ballard. I'd have no problem with that. I'd say, all right, that's his style. That's how he attacks interviews. But I've listened to two interviews that Dockage has ever done. I'm not a diehard Dockage fan. I'm not listening to him every day. So I've heard two interviews. I heard an interview with a general manager who was in one place for five years and did a terrible job. And I heard another interview with a general manager who's been here less than a year who replaced the general manager from the previous five years, and they were two polar opposite personalities. And it's not that he flamed the guy who was here for five years and didn't do anything and let the guy who just got here off easy. That'd be one, that would be a kind of inconsistency that I'd be okay with for now, and then three years down the road, if Ballard turned out to be horrible, and then you start to flame him, 
then I'd be okay with that. If you flamed both of them, I would be okay with that, even though I'd stay, eh, Ballard didn't really deserve 100% of that. I'd be okay with that because that's his style. But the fact that he was buddy-buddy, compliment after compliment, praising, oh, you're terrific, you're really terrific, you're so terrific, to Ryan Gregson after five years of misery, or should I say at least the last two years of misery, but five years of letting his quarterback get his ass beat, and then to come out here and flame the guy who's only been here a couple months, that's the type of inconsistency that I'm not a fan of. So I don't even care about the lack of professionalism. I know I'm not a professional. I know I'm never going to be a professional no matter what I do. It's just not my style. So I won't get on him for that, but I'm definitely going to get on him for how he handled last year's interview in comparison to how he handled this year's interview. Another thing, the whole bull crap about the cell phone, and you won't oh, believe God. who Andrew Luck texted. Andrew Luck texted this guy, and I, I can't tell you his name on the radio, but I'll tell you after. When I tell you this guy's name, and then as Ballard's answering the question, oh, but wait till you hear his name. When you hear this guy's name, you're going to be like, uh-oh, uh-oh, now I'm in trouble. Wait until you hear this guy's name. He said it like 15 times. If it's really that yeah. big of a deal, come out and say it. Say the guy's name. What's the guy's name? Tell us, Dan. Tell us. We want to know. If you're going to spread the rumor, you might as well go the whole nine yards, right? Exactly. But I'm sure there was absolutely zero truth to it. I can't imagine Andrew Luck sitting there. You know how long it takes to write a text message on one of those flip phones? And he's not that guy. Like This is what we talked about the other day in our video, and it's so it is. true. Every week we're going to hear something like this, and it's going to get more and more ridiculous. And it's like, so vague. Andrew, They're always so vague. Oh, Andrew Luck's text message. Andrew Luck had to hit the 5 button three times to get to the letter L. He had to hit the 7 button four times to get to the letter S. And he wrote this, like, massive paragraph novel. And Dan Dockage didn't even read the text. If you listen closely, Dan Dockage heard about it. So he heard about the yeah. text. Oh, this guy wouldn't lie to me. This guy wouldn't lie. No, I know this guy too. He wouldn't lie to me. Give me a break. 